Hey everyone, welcome back to Expo Tech. So here I've got the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad T60 once again, and the Acer Aspire uh, 5735 that I've both shown in uh, different videos. Um, today's going to be a teeny bit different. Um, I had an idea to run a Minecraft server for my friends, and I have a lot of options for server hosts. But one of my, one of my concerns is for power outages, even though they don't really happen that often. Um, what if something were to happen? I don't want the thing to get ruined, especially if I'm going to be away for a long time and I have no access to it. So, I think a laptop like this would be good. However, um, the processor here isn't really that good. I actually did do some upgrades to this the other day. I found a Core 2 Duo T5250 just laying around in my room. Put it in here from the Pentium T3200. But I have a Core 2 Duo T7400 in here, so why don't I move the CPUs over, just swap them. I already m swapped the RAM, but I think I should swap over the course, the CPU too. I'm also going to be putting a 128 gigabyte SSD inside here for the server and for speed. And I have a USB with mine OS on it, which is a Linux distribution specifically made for hosting a Minecraft server over the web. Um, so let's begin. All right, first things first, I am going to take the CPU out of the ThinkPad. Actually, for those of you who remember the um, the last uh, Acer video I made, you would remember that the thing had a lot of um, graphics issues, and I had apparently, quote-unquote, fixed it. Well... Some new uh, developments have come through since that video, through a lot of testing, and I've discovered that um, the issue is likely more of a software, a, a driver issue, and the, why is there a screw missing out of it? And the reason I think it's a software issue is because I don't remember the same glitches that I was seeing in that video on Windows 7, when I briefly used that on there nor when I booted into Linux live CDs. So to me, that sounds more like a software side issue, the fact that two other operating systems were not giving me that issue. Maybe the thermal paste hardened again, oh no. There we go. Just took a bit of convincing. Yeah, no, it didn't harden, it's just I put quite a lot on there. You know, I'm going to set this aside on a piece of paper somewhere else. That way I don't risk the pins getting bent. And I'm just going to just put this back like this and move it aside. And now it's Acer time. Oh, hey, you can see my reflection. All right, let's take out the battery. This is why I love working on these two laptops, because in just a handful of screws, the entirety of the system... Let me rephrase it. <laughs> because in just a few... The entire system is there just a few screws away. No, there's only one screw that's actually holding it into the computer, I believe. Yep. <laughs> All right, so, it's, so this should be installed just like this. There is some dust on it. Disgusting. And SSD is installed. Now it is CPU time. Let's get out Mr. Flathead. Like a... Okay. And uh, I think that's that upgrade done. So let's slide. Oh, I almost forgot to reconnect the fan. Oh, I'm really hoping that this computer actually will be able to uh, register the fact that there's the, 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 the new processor because if not, that's going to be a bit of a bad. And we don't want a bad. Oh, 
Oh no. Oh no, what happened? That's not good. Oh boy. So according to this this guy, the T7800 works, but I, I, I don't know why this isn't booting. So, um, a bit of an update. Um, I'm thinking that the reason that the computer is not posting is due to an outdated BIOS version. I am specifically running uh, BIOS version 1.07, and in a lot of threads where people have been able to upgrade this exact model up to a uh, Corsair Duo T9900 um, is that they are on BIOS version V1.10. Uh, so I'm currently trying to find that BIOS version and I'm hoping that might fix the, not just the, um, the CPU, um, and also I did make sure it is compatible with the socket, and plus, um, I put the old CPU back in just to make sure it still works, it posts now, so it probably, it could be a BIOS issue, um, and also upgrading the BIOS will allow me to use the full 4 gigabytes of RAM that I put into it, and um, I guess in the meantime, while I'm waiting to... Um, because I have a forum post here from biosmods.com and I had just made an account and so I can download stuff but it's not letting me just yet so it's probably still gonna be verifying so I'm gonna try in a bit um, but in the meantime I'm going to uh, plug in the USB and install mine OS there we go uh, USB generic flash there we go. Install to hard disk. As you can see, there's no visual glitching. Um, that's, again, Vista. Vista. Probably Vista's fault. Arr. There we go. Starting up the partitioner. I should probably get the tutorial open. Okay, that's weird, because in this video, it's supposed to boot up to, to this screen, but that... That one's not quite doing it, um... Okay, I got it working. If you try to do this and it hangs at 100% doing whatever, um, you should boot into a live Linux CD that's not this one, um, that preferably has a desktop environment, and then format the internal hard drive, because after I formatted it, now this works. So... Alright, okay. Uh, by the way, the tutorial I'm using is called MineOS, the easy way to set up a Minecraft server by Drew Howden Tech. Uh, shout out to you. Um, so, also I wasn't really able to get this BIOS download working, so I'm gonna find stuff later and then do the CPU upgrade. All right, it is installed. It is now booting up, I believe. I'm gonna skip that stuff. Right, yeah, let's install security updates. It's okay, yeah, because I'm not connected to the internet. I'm going to have to figure this part out on my own. Um, automatically, um, I should probably plug in an ethernet cable. Okay, um, so I'm getting this stuff configured now. It's plugged in ethernet-wise. Um, I think we're good now. Uh, okay, so I think I can hit back now. Okay. Um, there we go. All right. Accept the risk and continue. Oh, here it is. We are in. We are in the Mine OS server. It is open. This I'm gonna have to fix with the BIOS, but this is so cool. Um, okay, so after a bit of tinkering and looking up, I found the Mojang one. So the way that you do it, if you don't know, you have to click on your user here and click refresh profile list, and then you refresh the page, and then you get Mojang. You bring it right back up, and we can. Oh, it's up. Okay, it's up. Oh. Oh my god. Oh wow, my sensitivity is really high. 
Oh my god. Derp. Okay. So, it's up. It's running. I know I can connect to it. Um, I just had to do some port forwarding stuff. And I'm- Oh! Yes! Yes, it works! It works! Oh my god! Oh my god, it works! Yes! Yes! <laughs> awesome! Um, I decided to go with 1.12.2. Um, but yes, it works! It works! <laughs> oh my god! This is awesome! <laughs> oh wow! I have the BIOS now, so I'm gonna actually install that and then upgrade the processor. Okay, uh, with the help of my friend, the BIOS is confirmed to be on V1.10 now. I just put in the T7400. It's a moment of truth. That's, that's unfortunate. Um, Alright then. So I guess that's all I can really do for now. Um, yeah, it sucks I can't put in uh, a better processor than what's in there now, but the uh, T5250 is a pretty good processor on its own. Um, and the T7400 is more of like, it's a nice to have. Um, and I tested the server with my friend and it runs pretty well um, in its current configuration. Um, but even if the BIOS update didn't fix the whole CPU not working, at least it fixed the, um, at least it raised the, uh, the cap of how much RAM it could see. So now it sees all four gigabytes. And, um, yeah, I'd say this was successful. Not a hundred percent, but I have a Minecraft server that can run off of a 16 year old, um, Acer laptop. So thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.